and welcome to another edition of DT Live. Today is going to be a gaming stream. I'm going to be playing a little Zero AD, which is one of the free and open source games that I play on a somewhat regular basis on the channel. I've probably played Zero AD on camera half a dozen times at this point. It's one of my favorite games, and it's a, just a fantastic uh, real-time strategy game very similar to the Age of Empires games. For those of you that are in the YouTube chat hanging out, I see a lot of you guys are already here. Give me a yay or a nay on the audio. I'm going to check out myself. Yeah, I can hear the stream a little bit, so it sounds like audio is working just fine. Time for some gaming. Yeah, and today what I wanted to do, and I've been planning this for a while, is um, do a little bit of a uh, tutorial on Zero AD. I mean, I'm going to play the game as well, but uh, especially for the beginning part of the stream, I want to give you guys some tips, those of you that are just starting out with Zero AD. Because I, I see a, new players trying it out. And uh, a lot of new players, especially, I see, you know, making a lot of mistakes. I made these same mistakes when I started out because it's a, it's a complicated game. There's a lot to this game. And if, if you actually want to be successful, I'm going to show you some, some tips and I'm going to show you some mistakes that you should avoid making. So, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, okay. Audio is good. Uh, do you have a favorite nation in Zero AD? So you have uh, like a dozen civilizations in Zero AD. The one I play the most and I'm uh, most comfortable with are the Carthaginians. But at some point, I've probably played them all. Uh, so, and I'm going to go over some of the differences between the civilizations as well today. Big Pods came to say hi. He's not listening since he's still in a meeting. Well, that's good that uh, that you're at work. <laughs> and I guess that's good that you're actually paying attention at work and not paying attention to YouTube. I appreciate that. Fans from Bulgaria. And we've got uh, viewers from all over the world. When I check my YouTube analytics, it's, uh, it's really quite amazing how global the channel is. I think it's uh, partly to do with just how global Linux is, how global free and open source software is, right? It spans all nationalities, all races, ethnicities. There's no language barrier. You know, free and open source software is an ideology and everyone can be a part of it, you know, regardless of who you are, background, whatever. Now, fan from Belgium. All right, well, let me get into the game because we've got a lot. Well, I've got a lot I want to cover, and typically I stream for about an hour and a half on, on my live streams. That's typically a, a good time to shoot for, although usually I end up going a little over. But because we've got so much stuff to, to cover, you know, I really need to get here. So I'm going to go ahead and launch the game. And the first thing I want to do is ask you guys, can you hear the game audio? Which I'm pretty sure you guys can. So I'm looking at OBS right now. Go into audio properties. Nope, no game audio. Let me open up the old trusty Pulse Audio volume control. Let's see what is going on here. Let's see. Recording desktop audio from the wrong source, of course. You guys are hearing me now, though. Or you're hearing the game now. Pulse Audio. It never picks the right sources. <laughs> right? <laughs> Alright. So how is the music compared to me speaking right now? I know it's loud. I'm going to turn it down. This is about where I'll probably have it in game. All right. 
So what I'm going to do is I'm going to load up a single player because I want to pull up the civilization. So the civilization overview. So we have all of these various civilizations. They're all slightly different. They're very similar. I mean, you have different troop options, different building options, but for the most part, they're all very similar. You have different melee troops that you could train, ranged units you could train. For example, let me pick the Britons here, just as an example, and go to their structure tree. When you first start, you have a civic center. This is your town center. This is your most important building that gives you the most area. You don't want to lose your starting civic center, typically, unless you've already built a second one somewhere and you're kind of okay with losing that civic center. Losing the civic center typically is the end of the game for you. And you have troops that you can train. You always have female citizens, so typically you train women and you send them to usually farming or collecting wood. That's, that's what the women are for. The women can't really fight. They technically have a dagger on them and can do a little damage in a pinch, but they really don't do any real damage. They, they can't really do anything to uh, male citizen soldiers. The women can actually do pretty good damage against rams. So if you have a ram attacking your civic center and you have about 50 women there, you know, having them attack a ram actually, one ram, a single ram, usually can stop it, oddly enough. But uh, multiple rams, you know, no matter how big of group of, of women you have forming near your civic center, they're not going to stop that. Then you have the houses. The houses give you extra population. That's going to vary from civilization to civilization. This civilization we're looking at, the Britons, a, a house gives you a population bonus of five. So for every five population you want, you have to build a house. So typically these games are typically either a 200 pop max or a 300 pop max game, meaning a max population. So if I do a 300 population max game with the Britons, I'm going to have to build a ton of houses, right? Because each house gives me five population. There are some other buildings that will give you a population bonus. The most obvious one will be the barracks. Now this is where you train soldiers and that is typically one of the first buildings you need to start thinking about getting up once you've trained enough women initially in the game. One of the mistakes I see is a lot of new players don't realize how important the barracks is. So you want to build early on, but not, not early on, you don't want to waste all your starting wood, but you want to build as many barracks as you can once you have a comfortable wood economy. Because having multiple barracks allows you to train multiple soldiers as fast as possible. Uh, some of the other interesting civilizations here the Morians. The Morians are interesting because they start with a unique uh, worker elephant. So they have a, there, there's elephants in the game that are war elephants, but the Morians have a special elephant called a worker elephant that acts as a mobile storehouse. Because of that, it makes them one of the best new user-friendly <laughs> uh, civilizations. Like if you don't know which civilization to start with, the Morians are really nice. Let me go ahead and play a game here. And I've, I've got the uh, AI set to really hard. I really don't want to play against multiple really hard AIs. I'm going to pick a two player map. This particular map here, I doubt we're going to see the AI early on. I'm not really interested in fighting. I'm just going to show you what you should think about starting out. So the very first thing you should know is click on the Civic Center. When you click on it, there is this ring around it. What this ring is, is that is when you have the Civic Center garrisoned. When the Civic Center is firing arrows, that's how far out the arrows will go. That is the range, meaning it's a really good idea when you're building farms and you're building houses around the Civic Center to keep them near that circle. Because if you get raided early from your opponent, if they're within the circle, they're going to be under fire from the Civic Center. Now, let me go ahead and take the worker elephant here. I'm going to zoom in here. And where do I want to start? Well, you know what? I'm going to move the worker elephant over here to these fields here. These are berries. I'm going to double click one of the women to se select them all. And I'm going to send them to the berries. 
Now, typically you'd have to either have the women walk the berries they collect back to the Civic Center or build a farmstead, but the Morins has the worker elephant. That's a mobile drop site. They can just drop that off right there to him. And then I can have the men here, these two men and these two men. I need them chopping wood, so let's go ahead and we'll just chop the wood right here next to the Civic Center because we really need to get rid of those straggler trees here anyway so we can build some fields here initially. Uh, and then I'm going to take the one calf unit and have him hunt the sheep. This is really quick and easy food. And then you have enough wood in the beginning to train about six women. Typically I like to train them in batches of three. Just because the, the batch of six takes so long to train, splitting it up, you get some coming out, you know, a little quicker. And because I've got, I'm going to have so much food here because I've got the women on the berries and then I've got all these sheep here. We're just going to have a ton of food. So all these women that come out, I'm just going to send them straight to wood. And the reason they're going straight to wood is because I click the Civic Center and then, you know, I could right I could click the Civic Center and then right click on the wood here and that sends them to these trees. But I'm not going to send them that far. I want them chopping wood right here next to the Civic Center so they don't have to walk as far. Now one of the things here, let me go ahead and pause this. And one of the things that you should be aware of is there's four resources in the game that you have to collect. There's food, there's wood, and there's stone, and there's metal. And early on in the game, it's all about food and wood. Uh, one of the mistakes I see new players make and why they struggle is they start collecting stone and metal early in the game. And you don't want to do that because you can't even use that stone and metal. There's, there's nothing you can do with it early in the game because the units that you can train with that and the buildings that you can build with that stone and metal, you can't train you can't actually build any of that stuff in phase one which is the beginning of the game so if I, you know we have our stone mine here we have our metal mine here and uh, new users again you see a lot of them immediately start sending people to mine you're just wasting your time because you're mining all of this stone and metal and then can't do anything with it so that is time you could have had all of your units chopping wood or hunting or farming and I've got so many so much food and wood now I'm population max here see 19 of 20 so I really need to start building a house I'm gonna take three women and I'm just gonna have them build a house here actually I've got enough wood I'm just gonna go ahead and have them on house building duty for a while I'm just gonna have them build all those houses and then go back to chopping wood also, I've got enough wood. I could build a storehouse now. I'm going to build a storehouse. I'll eventually need one near the stone mine for men to mine stone. So it makes sense to go ahead and have these women build one here so they can chop this wood. Of course, I'm taking my time here. The very hard AI in this game is probably way ahead of me, but I'm not interested in actually winning this game. This is more for demonstration purposes. Now we don't really have any male citizens yet, right? We need to start thinking about what we're going to do here as far as an army, because if I got attacked right now, I would be completely screwed. So most civilizations have the ability to train about three different units at the beginning of the, of the game. Most of them have a spearman available. Most of them have some kind of ranged unit, such as a slinger, a skirmisher, or an archer. I have spearmen and archers. And then you usually have a cav unit. Uh, typically, the cav unit is going to be either a cav uh, spearman or a cav javelinier. I've got the cav javelinier. I'm going to go ahead and start training spearmen. I'm going to train three spearmen. And when they come out, I'm going to send them over here to chop wood. Just so if we got attacked right now, it's not all women. Because if it's all women, we're, we're in for a bad time. I'm going to go ahead and start making my first farm, or my first field here. We'll eventually need to build a farmstead, because I didn't build one initially, because I had the uh, elephant over here. 
The farmstead is where you get farming upgrades, and we will eventually need those. So these women here, what I'm going to go ahead and do... Now where do I want to build this farmstead? I'll just build it over here. And one of the things you really want to do is you want to be training troops all the time. Now I'm a little slow here because uh, just talking and demonstrating things, but if you actually want to win the game, it is a real-time strategy game. Meaning, if you're not constantly collecting resources and constantly training units, even for a few seconds, that is the difference between winning and losing the game. So I'm going to go ahead and start queuing up more women because I'm going to need a lot of women on farms here in a minute. I'll go ahead and start them building a lot of fields. So these berries won't last. Now one of the important things at the beginning of the game is food. Food, you always want to take the berries first. There's always, almost always going to be berries near the Civic Center. That's quick and easy food. And if you have hunt, which I did on this map, which is animals to hunt. Not all maps will have it, but I had all of those sheep. That is a ton of basically free food that my calf, you know, can go and grab. One other thing you want to do in the game, uh, a lot of new, new players don't do this, is you want to know what your opponent is up to. Because I, my opponent could have a huge army right here ready to attack all of these women that I've got farming, and I wouldn't even know it. Well, why don't I just send this one cav unit that I start the game with? He's not really doing anything right now that he he uh, killed all the sheep, right? So he can't farm, he can't collect wood. So let's have him do something useful, such as find out what my opponent is doing. Well, let's just send him around a little bit. We've got idle units here. That's not good. You never want any unit that can actually collect resources ever standing around. If they're standing around, that's essentially losing the game for you. And you always have to be mindful of the uh, pop max. Right now I'm pop maxed 40 of 40. That means I need to start building more houses. I'm just going to go ahead and have a couple of units. Build a couple of houses. I'll have this unit here. Build that house. I'm going to go ahead and keep building farms if I can. That tree right there is going to get in my way of farming. I probably should send some units out to... I'm going to train some uh, archers because I've already trained a few spearmen. Now one thing you want to do, and, and this is another mistake you see a lot of uh, beginning players make, you never want to train one type of soldier. One of the things you often see people is you know, they fall in love with spearmen or archers or slingers, and that's the only male unit they train, right? They'll have 200 archers, right? And it looks cool. And when they encounter something that archers are really good against, you know, they just wipe out their opponent, right? That's great. But when they encounter something that archers can't, you know, do anything against, like rams, for example, battering rams, which are made of wood, arrows don't do anything to it, right? And then you end up with battering rams coming toward your civic center and you've built this gigantic army that can't do a dang thing <laughs> against that, what your opponent chose to send against you. So you have to be mindful of the army you build and unless you know what your opponent is building, never build a single type of unit. Unless, you know, again, you know what your opponent's doing and you build this massive swordsmen or spearmen or archers or whatever to counter the one type of unit you know your opponent is building typically you want a mixture a good mixture of melee and ranged so in my case spearmen and bowmen what i'm going to do is i'm going to build some spearmen they're always going to be on the front lines of a fight and all my archers i'm going to make sure i keep them behind the spearmen constantly firing arrows that's how you win battles uh, beginning players they just typically just, just send everybody to a battle whatever formation however they arrive they may not even arrive in a group right you see a lot of beginning players sending one unit at a time into a battle one unit at a time that one unit is going to get killed before he ever does anything right always send groups and think about group placement 
going back to the game here. On pause. Where did my uh, cav unit end up? He is here. Now, this map here is rather interesting. I'm already at the bottom of the map, so I probably should have went this way with that cav unit. Now, this map here has water. Now, one thing about Zero AD is you can build a dock and you can build ships. You can actually cross oceans. Now, this map, I don't actually have to build a, uh, a dock to get across the map because there is a bit of land in the center that actually connects the two halves of the map. Now, I believe this is it here. Yeah, this is the, the bit of land that connects our two halves of the map. Let's go ahead and send this cab unit, though, over here and see what's going on. And I got all of these guys. I still haven't built a barracks yet, even though I said I needed one. Well, my one cab unit died, apparently. Oh, he's about to die, but the good thing is I know where my opponent is. He's actually a lot closer than I thought. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and build our first barracks because we're going to need a barracks. I'm going to go ahead and build a storehouse out here next to the barracks. One thing that's a really good idea is when you're placing barracks. The barracks do extend your territory quite a bit and a lot of people you, they tend to put them on the front lines sometimes too far on the front lines because it would be really easy hey I want all these trees out here right so let me put this barracks all the way out here by itself well that's great and then all my territory extends here where I can get to these trees but then I also have a barracks all by itself out here where if my opponent sends his army this one building by itself it's not gonna last very long he's gonna take that from me and it's just a, a bad idea so you, again you want to be mindful of where you where you build things right now I'm building basically this wall of houses in the back but really I should probably build a wall of houses in the front because uh, that's really where the action is going to come built one barracks let's go ahead and get a second barracks and then start training from the barracks now I'm going to have the barracks actually training all my male soldiers and I'm going to just keep the Civic Center mainly to train more women because I'm going to need, oh, at least, I would say 60 women or so just for a farming operation. Might want to put a tower out here as well to protect the barracks and to protect the wood here that we're collecting because this is a lot of wood one thing you also want to be mindful of is when you're starting out with zero AD it's very easy to mass a whole bunch of women very quickly and then we're gonna go out here and we're gonna start chopping wood because we need wood well don't make 20 30 female citizens and then have them here on the front lines chopping wood by themselves that's a bad idea if your opponent attacks you're gonna lose all of those women you're just gonna completely throw them away and <laughs> you're gonna lose the game so make sure have a, either a mixture of men and women out on the front lines or just strictly men and if you got stuff in the back that the women can do if there was wood lines back here have them you know working on that now I don't have any wood lines in the back so Oh, I need that house built. They stopped building that house. We need a lot more houses. Now, the Morians are one of those civilizations you have to build a ton of houses. And I've got to be mindful of that. I don't play the Morians that often. But I'm just going to start spamming houses. Nope. Got the little quake style drop down there. That's not what I wanted. Let's have those women build that row of houses there. That pr pretty much walls off an attack from back here. And then we've got the barracks and the men here. So they'll see an attack. And I've got the tower as well. 
these men here. I'm going to go ahead and have them build a storehouse right here because I'll need one for that metal eventually. When they're done with that straggler tree, I'm going to go ahead and send them to metal because it's about time we move on to metal. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to double click these two barracks and then I'm going to do control one and that set that to one on the keyboard. So now if I just hit one on the keyboard, I select both barracks and I can start training troops from both barracks. Uh, see, we've got two, that's one unit per barrack, but I could scale that up if I wanted to with the mouse scroll wheel. I could say uh, shift and the mouse scroll wheel. I could say I want to train eight spearmen and it's going to train four from each. And then since I've got both barracks selected, I could select a muster point, you know, where I'm sending the units. I'm going to send them right here to these trees here. Let's go ahead and get more storehouses built because we've got so many trees out here. And I don't want the units to have to walk too far for a storehouse. One other rookie mistake you see a lot of people make is you never want you never want your units to have to walk very far to deposit the resources they're collecting, whether it be food, wood, metal, stone. If you can build a storehouse right next to where they're working, that is maximum efficiency. If they have to walk a few feet, that's not a problem. Like right here, if, if they had to chop wood here and walk to this storehouse, that's getting a little far. And certainly if they've got to walk you know, say from this tree way over here to this storehouse. That's way too far because they're wasting a lot of time because their, their walk is kind of slow. They, these units don't move that fast. It's a few seconds wasted every time they have to walk back and forth to a drop site, right? So have the drop sites right on the resource where, that you're collecting. I'm gonna pause the game just for a second. Let's go back to the YouTube chat. I'm going to go ahead and drink my coffee. I made me a cup of coffee before the stream started and I haven't drank it. Not at the first sip. It's probably getting cold on me. Hmm. Let's see what kind of questions and comments we have in the, the chat. BSD? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The uh, soldiers, yeah, you know, when you click on them, they ask a question, you know, like a, hey, what's going on? They're saying, uh, I think it's Latin, TST, TST, right? But it, the way it's whoever recorded it, it sounds just like they're saying BSD, actually, right? It's, it's weird. Uh, yeah, I need a lot of women on my farm. You want five women per farm for maximum efficiency. Uh, five is the max meaning if you put a sixth woman on that field she's just going to be idle she can't do anything so five women per farm so typically you're going to build eight farms because you're going to build them in a grid around the civic center so you're at least going to build eight five women per you need 40 women on those eight fields and then depending on how the game is going you may need more farms typically i, I like to have about 10 to 12 farms so that's why when I said I'm going to need about 60 women earlier, that's why that number. And you want women farming, they farm better than men, right? When we come to mining, because uh, I'm at the game, the stage of the game where I need to start mining stone and metal, men are going to mine much quicker than women. Don't, don't have men farm, don't have women mine. Now the woodcutting, you can have men or women get the wood. They they both gather wood at a rather decent rate. Uh, when are you going to upgrade the Civic Center? So typically, if you're talking about the phases, so there's three phases in the game. There's phase one, which is the phase you start with. Uh, you can think of it as like a village phase. And then there's phase two, the town phase, which how you get to the town phase is you pay a bunch of resources, uh, an amount of food and wood. You collect enough, you pay it, and you're upgraded to the town phase. And then to get to the third phase, which is the city phase, you have to build at least three special buildings 
and also collect some some resources, some stone and and some uh, metal to pay to go to that phase. So, and typically you want to get to phase two in about ten minutes. The ideal what you want to start with is you want to aim for about a hundred population in ten minutes. That's not hard. Uh, I am talking and going really slow right now. And I am at 77 of 95 max population. And I've had a lot of idle time. I haven't been constantly training units from these buildings, even though I said that's what you have to do or it's a mistake. But again, I'm, I'm talking through this video, right? I easily could have had 120 population by now. Easily, <laughs> right? Uh, so having 100 population in 10 minutes is, is easy uh, once you get the hang of it. Many really good players can get to 100 in about 8 minutes. And typically, once you get that population to about 100, you know, you, you, that's whenever you want to go ahead and push the button and go to phase two. Uh, Roland says, hello, DT. How you doing, Roland? Means, uh, what should I do in Greek TST? Yeah, okay. Yeah, I knew it was, it's inquisitive, right? And they're obviously asking a question, but it sounds like the question they're asking is BSD? <laughs> As in, hey, should I try BSD? Well, try Linux first, but BSD's okay. All right, back to the game. Again, I, I, the opponent that I'm playing, the very hard AI, is probably way ahead because, again, we're just kind of, I'm just talking through a lot of stuff here, mainly for demonstration purposes. Because I've had people in the past, when I play the game, I'm moving so fast, they have no idea what's going on. I'm going to hit one on the keyboard and train up some archers. Just keep training from both barracks. So I've got a ton of wood. I've got so much wood and food. I need to go ahead and click up. I need to start building more houses. I need to build more farms. These women. That last farm up. And I'm just going to have a dedicated house builder here. Just go ahead and wall all of this off. And this is a technique you see most players do where they uh, basically have your farms and then the houses, especially if you're one of these civilizations like the Morians, you got to build a ton of houses because it's only a five uh, population bonus. Some civilizations, your houses are 10. You don't have to build as many houses in that case. But in this case, I've got to build so many houses, I might as well essentially build them as a wall for defensive purposes. There, there's no reason not to. Because now I've basically forced my enemy, once this is up, he can only come through here. And here has the barracks, the tower, of course all these soldiers. I hit one on the keyboard, I'm still training, but I can't train anymore until I get some houses up. I guess I can build some houses out here, have these men build a house or two. I'm really behind. I don't want to build houses too far out. Oh, wow. You see this? My opponent is trying to build a military colony right there. A military colony is essentially like a second civic center, which some civilizations have the military colony. All civilizations have a civic center, so I could actually go out here. I see this metal right here. It would be great if I wanted it. I could. There, there's metal here, but really, I think the civic center. Uh, I'll put it out of the way. This will be a good spot because I've got the metal. Once these guys build that, I want them to go to metal. Except the women. Yeah, these women out here. They need to head back here. Let's go ahead and get some farming upgrades. So the farmstead I built. I never did upgrade. I'm going to click on one of the storehouses. Let's get the wood cutting upgrade, the stone mining upgrade, the metal mining upgrade. I need to start training troops to mine. So let me go ahead start sending troops to stone. I've got some troops over here on metal. Of course, all these troops are about to be on metal. Let me make sure I still have more bowmen, more spearmen coming out. And I want them going to this wood here. We're getting a little further away from the trees. Now that they've emptied these trees, the storehouse is a little too far, so I build another storehouse closer. The storehouses are not very expensive as far as it doesn't take a lot of wood to build them. 
And because you get so much wood from the trees, there's no reason, again, to have them walk. It is worth it to build the storehouses closer to where they're, where they're chopping that wood than have them walk. I've got these people walking a million miles away. These are three women. I don't know why they're all the way over there chopping wood. I wasn't paying attention to them. Would be great if I could build a field there, but I can't because of that tree. Okay. Let's build a storehouse and have all these people clear out those trees. All right, and then I've got all the men I can on that mine. Let's go ahead and get some of them on this mine as well. Oh, definitely don't want to delete anything. Hit the wrong key. Hit the delete key on the keyboard. Some of these men can actually chop wood right here next to that civic center. Oh, and they're coming. So, let's go ahead. Garrison the civic center so it's firing arrows. I don't want to garrison everybody, though. Because I do need... Oh! What I want is the spearmen out here. The longbowmen. I'd like to move them over here. Uh, I'm just going to lead these people that are chasing my bowmen on a merry little chase. <laughs> uh, see, he's got pikemen. His pikemen against my archers, they can't do anything unless they get to me. <laughs> but my archers can actually kill his pikemen rather quickly if I just turn around and start picking them off one at a time. So this here did not go very well because... I mean, he can't take that civic center while it's garrison, but he's still got all these troops down here that I need to take care of. Go ahead, train some more spearmen, train some more archers. And then we need to go clean this up, I guess. I don't want to send everybody. Because he's probably got another attack coming. Actually, the civic center, the arrows from the civic center cleared that up. I don't have to send anybody. Perfect. Let's go ahead. Build a temple right here. Just so some of my guys that are hurt can heal. Let's get these guys out. Get them back on stone. Or uh, metal there. Now that we're at phase two, I need to build three special buildings to get to phase three. The temple is one, and you see I'm, I'm healing my hurt troops. The other special building I really would like to have is a market. So let me get some of these men here to build a market. The market I would like to build in the back, uh, kind of away from the action. Because it's an important building, you don't want to build it way out here to be destroyed or to be taken. Another important building I would like to have is the forge. That's where you get your weapons upgrades. Have one of these guys start that. And then once I have those, I can pretty much go to phase three now. I can also start training units from this civic center. Go ahead, get units out here. Send them to that metal. Hit one on the keyboard for my barracks here. I've only got two barracks. Really, I'd like to have quite a few more. Build another barracks out here. The more barracks, the better. You want to be able to train from as many buildings as possible. And the good thing is if he destroyed this civic center, now that I have a second one, I mean, I could actually just start building farms and everything over here to where if something really bad happened to this civic center, it would be okay, but I don't think he can touch me. I've built a pretty good defensive position here. starting to run out of wood, at least over here. At some point, what I want to do is actually 
Let's, let's go poke around on the other side of the map and see what he's doing. I can go ahead and move up to phase three now, can I? Uh, cost. Ah, I haven't finished building the uh, third building here. Oh. Yep, so I caught him. He was on his way. Definitely want to upgrade that tower. These guys. Uh, I'm housed. I'm going to lose that barracks there, but that's fine. It's going to get all my troops back here and do what I can against these elephants. I can do much against these elephants. I probably have lost this game, but again, I talked way too much at the beginning of this game. I went uh, twice as <laughs> slow as I really should have done. And now I've got these units back here. Got women actually here near the front lines. Yeah, yeah, I'm gonna lose this game. What I would have to do at this point, I just need to send every male soldier I've got. But it's not going to be enough. But again, this was more of a demonstration of the farming operation, the storehouses, the farmsteads, the drop sites, how to build an economy. Now that I've given you some of the pointers, and I built the buildings to get to phase three. The only thing you didn't see there was once we got to phase three, start building siege engines such as battering rams and elephants. Oh, yeah, my population is down to under 20. I think I can safely resign. So that was that. I'm going to play another game here in just a second for real, where I actually move as fast as I can. I, I probably won't explain anything. <laughs> All right. DT, you ever play Caesar 3? It's an old game. I, I've never heard of that one. I'm not much of a gamer, though. So... I don't know a lot of games. <laughs> That's not unusual for me. So, like Zero AD is one of my favorite games. I haven't played Zero AD probably in three weeks, four weeks, <laughs> the last time I played it. And I don't game that much. Yeah, is I am I playing online though? I'm not playing a multiplayer game because if I played a multiplayer game trying to explain things, and talk people through as a tutorial, I'd get killed, right? <laughs> uh, real live people that actually know the game are even better than the very hard AI. So no, this it wouldn't be appropriate for me to jump in a uh, multiplayer game and actually try to talk you guys through stuff. Well, let's see. Please build more houses. Yeah, again, uh, obviously doing this video, I wasn't keeping up with the house building I knew I was going to lose that game. I mean, I knew when I started it, I was going to lose that game just by talking a lot. So, so let's uh, briefly cover again before I move on to the, uh, an actual game, and I'm going to rush through it, and I'm going to win. I'm going to beat the very hard AI. I may play against multiple very hard AIs, <laughs> but you know, it's all in the beginning. Go to berries, and if you got hunt on the map, train a, a calf unit or two and hunt. All the sheep, deer, if you got elephants, they're a ton of food. Be careful. Elephants are dangerous. They can kill. Uh, yeah, get as much food and as much wood early on and never, well, like in that game, I had a ton of food and wood all the time. That That's bad. If you're actually collecting resources 
and you're not using it, that's bad. As soon as you have wood and food in the bank, spend it, right? Train units or build houses, right? It's, you should never have resources just sitting there. If you do, I promise you, your opponents that know what they're doing, they spent their resources, right? They spent it on an army that's coming to kick your ass, right? So, uh, all right, so I'm going to play the game for real this time without, you know, really trying to talk you guys through anything. So, I'm going to go to single player, and let's see, maybe I'll do a three player match, and I'll play against two very hard AI opponents, or I could even try a four player match against four, uh, three very hard AI opponents, that's, that's tough though. Uh, that would be a lot to ask for. Let's see, that's a three player map. It's a three player map. Here's an interesting three player map that also involves uh, water, so I could build a navy. I wanted to go that route. Yeah, why don't we do that? So we'll do that map. This time I'll play the Carthaginians, which is the civilization I, I play the most and I know the, the best. Because this is going to be tough. This is going to be tough for me to win. So let's go ahead and you see, you got a civilization on the map here, a civilization here, and a civilization at the top. So it's, it's not like this map is balanced. Every civilization is going to have different resources immediately available. The person that has the big island is going to be in much better shape than the other folks here. Yeah, I don't know. If, I might want to pick a better map as far as a more balanced map. Because that one seems like one of the players really gets a, a big advantage. Uh, you know what? I said I was going to play it. Let's just play it. So Carthaginians, Barcania is the map. Me against two very hard AI opponents. All right, so first thing I'm going to do is uh, click the women, have them collect the berries. Then we'll click the men, have them start on the wood. I'm going to go ahead and train women. Where are... Yes, see? We got one archer and seven women, but it says I have 11 units. Where are they? Am I missing something here? Let me scroll around the map. Where are these? And now it says I got 14, but where are they at? I've only got 11 on the map. That is weird. That is really, really weird. I'm probably not going to play this map. Because <laughs> I have no idea where... Where three of... At least three of my units are. So they are not... Well, now they're on screen. Uh, maybe it counted the people I was training. Well, I wasted some time there. I'll restart that in just a second. I, you know what? I'm going to pick a different map. But first, what I'm going to do is I am going to run to the little girl's room and take a tinkle. <laughs> I will be right back, guys. And then we'll play some more Zero AD for real this time.
All right. What did I miss? Let me see if I can find a better map that is a three-player map. The uh, Gambia River. Yeah, I note this map, and this map is pretty fair for each player. I guess if there was one unfair part about this, one player starts here, one player starts here, one player starts here. The person in the middle, obviously, is between two enemies. So I guess the middle player technically has a disadvantage. But that's fine. It's not huge. That last map I played, or was thinking about playing, that map was a little weird. Let's go ahead and get into this. And then I'm going to play this as fast as I can to try to win. Let me zoom in here a little bit. Get all four of these women. Let's go build a farmstead and collect those berries. Take these two men, these two men, four total. There, this cab unit, there is no hunt. So let's go see what our opponent's doing. Just go spy on our opponents and then train six women when they come out. And I need food in a major way because we didn't have the hunt so I'll send the first three that come out to the berries the next three I'll send to the wood let's see get him to cross he can't cross where the water's deep but right here where it's shallow he can cross get these women out here There is red. Actually, he's just going to bring my horse back right here. I'll just let him stand guard for now. Because I really can't do anything else with him. Because, again, there's no, there's nothing to hunt on this map. And the cab units can't actually collect wood or anything. I'm going to need a house pretty soon. The Carthaginians, their houses, give you a population bonus of 10. women have them start on the next house and I try to build my population as fast as I can I said you want a hundred population in about 10 minutes typically let's see if I can get there faster than that the real trick will be food food is gonna be tough I'll go ahead and build a farm I got extra berries though actually didn't need that farm the next group of women have them come out here and start collecting these berries then. I also need to build my first storehouse. Right now the wood is close enough. Having them walk to the civic center was okay. But eventually I want a storehouse. Makes sense to have one near that stone, but can't really squeeze one in there. Put one back here. These women. I really need a farmstead out here but I'm light on wood right now. I'll wait a second for these folks to drop off that wood at the Civic Center, and then when they finally do, I'll build the farmstead. There we go. Farm, right there. Keep training. And Light on food, light on wood. But again, this is, it's not horrible. Because again, you don't want a ton of extra food in wood. The main thing is that we're always spending it. I haven't built an army of any kind. I've trained nothing but women. So that's the cheap way to go. Women only cost food. The problem is if I got attacked, I'd be in a lot of trouble. So eventually I need to start thinking about 
an army of, of male soldiers. So I need to start thinking about that first barracks. So I need to keep building houses. And start a house there. We send these two archers out here. I'd like to build a barracks out here, but there's there's nothing to build. I don't have enough wood. Hmm. That's still 63 wood shy. Is a group of... Oh, there's a whole bunch of trees out here. Maybe that's where I should start sending folks. For right now, though, I'm training mostly women. I'm going to send the women to the back, right? Again, you don't want to send them out front. At least not until I have some men to go along with it. Go ahead and queue up four spearmen. I'll send those four spearmen here with these two archers, so I'll have at least six units there, plus the cab standing guard to warn me that something's coming. The women over here, finished. Go ahead and have them start farming. I build a field right there. Let's go ahead and click on the storehouse, get the wood cutting upgrade. Good on food, wood is going to be the problem. Yes, see? Yes, see? Build another house. Yes, see? Yes, see? Let's go ahead and get that first barracks up. Because that's the big thing. Once I have that first barracks up, I feel pretty confident that I can defend. So now I can train more male soldiers quicker. Trying to put a farm right there. Let's just queue up a whole bunch of women. Yes, Steve. We're going to run out of berries here not too far from now, so start thinking about putting all the farms down. Alright, go ahead and train. I'll train some archers. Since I trained a group of spearmen last time, we want a mix of Spearmen and archers, melee and ranged. Again, you never want all of just one type of unit. But you'll run in a situation where one type of unit is completely useless. Really, you're going to need a storehouse near that mine eventually. I didn't leave myself much room to build one. Keep training, women on the farms. Yeah, I'm going to need more food. A lot more food now. So let's go ahead and take six women. Build a field right here. One of the problems is these straggler trees that are in the way from where I could potentially build farms. So I got these trees over here send some women out here to chop that. Get that out of my way so I can build a field there. Go ahead and get the farming upgrade. Houses. Keep building houses. Some women here to uh, build one right next to that door house. Build a couple of them. 
That'll give me a boost of about 20 population. So right now I'm pop maxed, meaning what I had queued up, those, well, those four women will come out, but these three men will not until the house goes up. So I gotta be mindful, always mindful of the houses. Have these women here in the back, build some houses back here. Guess why not? It's a good place to put a house, safe, out of the way. All right, so the berries are done, so these women that were on the berries can build a field right next to that farmstead. And have they cleaned up these trees enough to where I could squeeze a field in here? Uh, kinda. Yeah. That's what I want. All right. All right, so we are 8 minutes, 36 seconds in, and I'm at 82 population, but I've got plenty queued up. I've got enough queued up to, to make it to 100 easily in 10 minutes. And again, oh, that wasn't like blazing fast speed. But I feel pretty good. Like if I got attacked right now, I feel like I've, I've built a, enough of an of an army. Let's go ahead and build another barracks. A second barracks would be good. Now our opponent, his territory is extending a little bit here. You see he's putting, what is that? I don't know what that was, but I, I stopped him building it. But he's close. So we need to start thinking about defense. Maybe a tower somewhere right here as well. see. Go ahead and get another farm. There's this farmstead out here. Squeeze a field right there. Yeah, Steve. This tower, I'm going to go ahead and garrison it. If it was further back where I built the tower, I wouldn't bother garrisoning yeah, Steve. it uh, j just yet. I'd wait we were attacked but because this is right on the front lines you'd be surprised that you know when we get attacked you know I, I won't be prepared for it and my opponent will take that tower away from me before I ever have a chance to get it garrisoned so I'm just gonna go ahead and stick three three guys in it now also let me go ahead and control group these two barracks and queue up a mass of spearmen now my population's over a hundred with more to come as far as I'm training a bunch more. I'm just going to go ahead and move to phase two because we're ready. Matter of fact, I need to start thinking about maybe, maybe doing something here. That's a pretty good group. I'm just going to go poke around a little bit. But my horse is getting ahead of everybody. Well, you know what? Let's deposit some wood first. You see, they're they're holding wood. I don't want to send them into battle with all that wood. Because they're going to die. <laughs> right? And then I'm going to lose all that wood. So have them drop that off. And then... What was this he was building? A market. That would be great if I could steal that market. If I can steal his market... That would be fantastic. Let's go ahead and make sure we're still training, folks. Again, always training, because these guys, they might die, right? They didn't, though. We did a, we did a good job, but this market, I gotta destroy it. So, perfect. That was one of his... Uh, phase three buildings you know phase, well phase two buildings to get to phase three so that really put a hamper on him you know getting to that next phase this is a storehouse strategically not important at all I shouldn't have even wasted my time taking it but since I did I'll destroy it Where are his female citizens? Because that's what I would like to do, is uh, take some of them out. Let's go ahead and get my own market up while we're 
destroying his market. Oh, there is his civic center. I can't take his civic center, though. Let's go back. We did enough. That was a pretty good little excursion into his territory. I don't want to build my forge that close to enemy lines. I'd rather put it back here. The forge is essentially the blacksmith. That's where you get your weapons upgrades. Oh, he's, he's chasing me. Really? I didn't expect that. After doing what I did to him, I would think he would be happy I was leaving. <laughs> uh, but it is an AI. Sometimes they do act kind of dumb. Need more houses. Some of these women on a house or two out here. Got the market up. While we can buy metal cheaply. We buy some metal. Got the forge up. Let me go ahead and get the first two weapons upgrades. Well, we'll go ahead and get all the phase one upgrades. Make our troops stronger. It'd be great if I could afford a temple, but I don't have any stones. So let's train some troops and send them straight to stone. Some more women farming. Yes, Steve. Uh, since you guys are just standing here, chop some wood. Don't want any idle folks. Where can I build some houses that are safe? Guess I can build some houses out here. He can't really touch me back here. Got that tower upgraded. Build a storehouse out here. So they don't have to walk as far. Can I build that temple yet? Nope. Uh, let me go ahead and trade. I've got plenty of wood. Trade for the stone. Got plenty of food as well. I want a temple, and then I want to move up to the next phase. And the temple being on the front line here. It's a nice place for it. This is going to be hard for him to get through. He's got to come this way, unless he builds a ship to cross the river. He's got to come at me through this path right here. Which, I've got my barracks, a tower, this garrison, so it's going to be firing arrows. And of course, I've got my temple that'll be healing my troops. So if I'm fighting right here, I'm happy. If my opponent is fighting right here, he's not happy. Yes, yeah, Steve? I should go ahead and fully garrison this tower. Again, just so I don't have to think about it later. I need to build a storehouse next to this metal here. I can put one right there. How many women do I have? 60? Let's get all 60 women farming. Sure, I don't have any men there. I do. A couple of men got wrapped up in all of that. Let's make sure we have enough fields so everybody can farm. get a little further away from that farmstead than I'd like, but that's okay. Yeah, Steve. Can I push the button on phase three? I'm gonna need metal. Yeah, Steve. But other than that, we're pretty good. Yeah, Steve. Eight houses. I'm just gonna spam some houses while I wait to move to the next phase. That'll get me up to about 200 pop max. It's a 300 pop max game. Got some of you guys. 
couple of houses out this way. Use another barracks. When the fighting happens, again, you want to be able to spam out troops. Put a barracks over here to extend my territory a little closer to these trees here. Now, can I move up to phase three? I can. When I get to phase three, I build uh, a fortress to get my hero. And then I'll build some elephant stables to get some elephants. And then I'm just gonna steamroll the guy in red, which we should have set him back a little bit. I should have done a little bit of damage to him. Let me go ahead. Start thinking about doing a little more damage to him. So I'm gonna go ahead and take these guys. So we know where his civic center is. Oh, he put a temple right here. Uh, this is what you don't do. You don't put important buildings way off by themselves. <laughs> that is just a free building for me. Now I'm going to put all three barracks in that control group. I'm just going to start sending people forward, I think. I'm going to garrison the temple. I'm going to keep that temple. I ain't giving it back. Not going to do it. And when I reach phase three, my territory should extend far enough. I may actually just get that temple in my territory now. Would it allow me to build a barracks here? It wouldn't. Oh, that's unfortunate. Could I build a storehouse? It's not going to let me build anything right here. Well, that's fine. Could I build a civic center? Yes, I could. That's how I beat him. Get my new civic center right there. Plus, we get to chop all that wood. Yeah, he's in trouble now. Now that I get a foothold over there in his territory, he's in a lot of trouble. Keep building houses. Oh, I guess he, he wants to stop that. Yeah. Me building that. Yes. He's attacking. That's fine. Yes. I've got more troops than he can stop, though. Because I can send everybody forward, pretty much, that I've got. I mean, I've got so many troops. Matter of fact, I should probably send everybody forward that I've got. There's no reason not to. Because there's nobody behind me to attack. I mean, the only attack's coming this way. So let's get all of my people up front. I could go ahead and garrison the Civic Center a little bit. Not everybody, though. Head, chop wood. And now, well, actually, before we do that, let's capture that. That's the market. <laughs> he keeps giving me a market. These guys are trying to take back that temple, these two guys, but I've got 20 people inside that temple. He's never taking that temple back. Uh, let's go ahead and start thinking about elephants. I'm about to roll him with elephants. How about right here? That's a good place for the elephant stable. Now I have two markets. That's good. Because I have two markets, I could actually train traders. Merchant traders. And they could trade between my two markets. You know, if I there was a resource I was lacking, that's a good way to get it. Oh, what do I want here? I need a fortress. Would he allow me to build a fortress right there? Let's get everybody on that fortress. They're building that fortress right next to the temple that's healing them while they're being attacked. 
All right, and I've built enough houses for the 300 pop max. I just need to get to 300 pop max. This guy, he's toast. There's no doubt I beat the red player. Once this fortress goes up, he's done. Five elephants come out. I want them to go straight to the civic center. Yes, Steve. Let's go ahead. Frosto. Garrison the fortress. Yes, Steve. Can I train the hero? I, I would like to train Hannibal, but I don't have enough metal. Let me use my new market to trade for metal so I can train Hannibal. Yes, Steve. Oh, these guys just want to capture stuff. Hey, go ahead. I don't mind that. Wouldn't mind collecting some more wood while we're here. Let's get the weapons upgrades for phase two. Uh, I don't have enough metal. I'm never going to have enough metal on this map. There's no metal. That's the problem. These guys, I like the fact that they're... I might have to garrison that barracks if I want to keep it. Either that or I need to extend my territory far enough to where I can keep it. That's probably what I need to do. I'm just going to gradually build into him until all of his territory is mine. Yeah, without metal, I can't really do anything with elephants either. Yeah, this is going to be tough. This is a tough, tough map without metal. Oh, Hannibal is out, the hero. Well, if Hannibal's out, let's go ahead, go to the Civic Center and capture it. Because Hannibal's strong enough even without the other elephants. They're still training. But Hannibal, he can knock over a Civic Center, no problem. fully garrisoned either take what I need to do is my I, after I take red out I need to go find metal there it is I see it so you guys go mine that's exactly what I needed train some train some more troops from that barracks send them there That's it. We took his civic center. He's done. I could start training women from my new civic center. That's one player down. Now this player, the middle player, was at a disadvantage because he may have been under attack from uh, the other player because he was in the he was the meat in the sandwich, right? Yes. <laughs> he was uh, in between me and Green. So that's possibly why I had an easy time with him. I'm going to have a much harder time with Green. Probably. Because he should be a lot further along than Red. I'm just guessing. Can I get weapons upgrades yet? I can. I want iron weapons. I want the archery upgrade. So I've strengthened my troops a pretty good bit. Let's go ahead, get an army together. I'd like some priests to heal us. They come out. I'd like for them to join as well. But let's go get this tower right here. It's off kind of by itself. I, that army will easily destroy that tower or capture it either one I'll capture it if I can which again I should have no problem capturing it with seven elephants plus the hero you know that's a that's an easy capture and then I garrison it so that tower is now firing arrows on green because it's my tower it would be great if I could take this other tower out but I don't know. Oh, accidentally hit the overview of the civilization. Okay, 
Well, he's sending a pretty good force here. He does not want me to take this. I think he probably understands, the AI understands what's about to happen. So I'm about to win. Let's get some troops out of that civic center coming forward. Hey, go to stone mine. Oh, I've got this barracks here I could train some troops from. I got this barracks I captured earlier I could train troops from. Get all of those sending folks forward. Got my priests. All right, I ended up destroying that tower, not paying attention. Uh, that army couldn't capture it. I guess all they could do was destroy it. I, I captured it at that dock, though. I could build a boat now if I wanted to. I didn't even have to build my own dock. That's nice. All right. I'm losing quite a bit of troops. Not that it matters. I've... I've got enough resources here to... There's no chance of me losing this game. Yes, At least I don't think there are. Yes, Now, Green actually followed me as I was retreating. Hmm. That's interesting. I think what I want to do... I need to heal all of my people, but I don't want to have to walk all the way back where my temples are. So let me get 20 archers right there, building that. And then you guys are gonna need a barracks closer, just so I don't have to train people and have them walk a million miles. Somebody destroyed that barracks before it started getting built. We'll build it further back then, I guess. Okay, that one's going up. Let's see if I can get a second one up right there. Ah, uh, they took the dock back. I should have destroyed it if I wasn't going to keep it. That's my fault. Let's see if I can train some more elephants. Yep, I can. Yeah, I've got all kinds of troops now. Yeah, green is trying to attack. I'm at pop max, so I've got all kinds of troops queued up, but I can't train them because it's not enough room. That's fine. What I'll do is I'm going to send them all into battle. If I lose some troops, it doesn't matter. I've got the rest queued up. I've got their replacements ready, basically. So I can afford to lose some troops here. I'm just going to send a big-ass army. Ah, uh, there's the Civic Center. Uh, I wish the elephants were out in front instead of <laughs> my, my soldiers. Let's see if I can swing around here. That is a group of about 84, including a lot of elephants and the hero. So I should be able to at least destroy the Civic Center. I may not be able to capture it. Yeah, he's got it garrisoned. It's a really strong Civic Center, too, because this civilization he's playing, the Iberians, have stone buildings. So I'm going to have to destroy it rather than trying to capture it. It would have taken me all day to get the capture. I just didn't want to wait that long. I'm going to destroy it, and then back off a little bit. He's going to give chase a little bit, but what I would like to do... He's got these towers back here. If I could take them, that'd be great. They're losing loyalty, so I actually didn't have to take the towers. By destroying his civic center, all of his territory is starting to lose loyalty. Oh, he's got battering rams. Wow, if he'd have sent those against me... That would have been good for him, but he never did. I don't have a whole lot that could have stopped those battering rams. The spearmen are, do okay damage against the battering rams. They're not great. The archers do nothing. The elephants can destroy battering rams, though. We're at 29 minutes. Essentially, the game is over. 
So in about half an hour, I beat, beat the uh, two AI opponents. A real human being would resign at this point because there's no, there's no coming back from this. Actually, I, is Red defeated? I don't know, even know if I cleared out Red completely, but what we have to do is I'm going to go put all of my troops on very aggressive or violent mode here, meaning kill anything that you come across. Oh, we've got towers and stuff up here. Yeah. So what he's going to do is he's going to have all those towers probably garrisoned up here. I don't want to just send my army up there to die. The elephants can handle it, but like I had some stray archers and spearmen, you know, trying to go after those towers by themselves, and that's not that's not good. They're just going to die. Let's get a mass here of about 60 folks and go capture that. Train up some more troops in case I need them. Looks like I will. Train up some more healers. Unfortunately, when you're playing the AI, he doesn't ever resign. <laughs> you know. The only way to defeat the AI in the game is actually to defeat him. I mean, completely defeat him. Kill everybody he has. Yeah. Garrison that tower. I'm going to go ahead and ungarrison this tower. Because... That tower will never be taken. So no point in having people in it, but I'm going to garrison that one. And I, actually, why don't we go for the capture on this civic center? Or is that the fortress? That's his fortress. And again, the Iberian, just like uh, their civic centers, their fortresses, and their towers, they're built of stone. They're kind of tough. If he's got this garrisoned, I may or may not be able to capture it. It looks like I will get the capture. It's going to take a minute, though. What I should do to speed this along, build a civic center. My civic center here takes all of his territory, basically. That really pushes things forward a little bit. He's got a dock, he's got ships, he's got people on the ship. That's not good. Uh-uh, uh-uh. Nope. You gotta get back from that ship. That ship will wipe out my entire army. A garrison ship like that. Matter of fact, that ship is bad news for me. He could take that ship down the river to my base unload at my base. Do I have anything back at my base? Well, I got a lot of men just sitting around. And all these men that were mining that no longer have anything to mine. What was that? That was a storehouse for mining that never got built. Uh, that was a mistake on my part. I guess I could go build a dock. Yeah, his ship probably killed a bunch of my people while I wasn't paying attention. Let's see if I can go kill that ship. Again, this is annoying because he can't win. I can't lose, but there's not much I can do about it. I may have to go build a dock, actually. I may have to build my own dock so I can <laughs> build ships to go get him. 
Okay, well, I destroyed his, his ships, at least. There's another civic center over here that I've got to get. Oh, I can build a ship now. I don't have to build a dock. Okay. Well, these guys, I was actually sending them out to look for a spot to build a dock. I don't need that dock now, though. Oh. Forget that. Chop some wood. That civic center is destroyed. Yeah. At this point, I mean, he's got a few structures st still down here, but... Got a ship up, and he's got a ship. Did my ship destroy his? Actually, yeah. He ungarrisoned his ship. So, his ungarrison ship is not going to last long against mine. I wanted to. There is a special ship I could train called the Fire Ship. Do I have one? It's not available for every sieve. Yeah, it's not available. The Fire Ship is a suicide ship. It actually comes out on fire and it's on a timer, basically. You've got, you know, so few seconds basically to ram it into another ship. Now I'm gonna have to go around the map and just find the handful of people he still has around, but I'm not going to. I'm just gonna resign, even though I won the game. Again, against human beings. This game was over 10 minutes ago. So that was a little bit of zero AD there. Let me catch up on the chat here. Give me a second, guys. All right. Hey DT, opinions on Temple OS. I've taken a look at Temple OS a couple of times. I think I did a video about it where I just installed it in a virtual machine and uh, played around with it for a bit. It's an interesting little project. I mean, it's not anything you really do anything with, but it, I mean, it's interesting. Let's see, I don't know how to explain how I read subvolume. I'm not sure what the subvolume topic was. Let's see. Well played. Congratulations. Yeah, that wasn't too bad. I, I, I've i gotten to the point where I can always beat the very hard AI 1v1. Uh, obviously, I didn't in that very first game talking and trying to uh, show you guys some of how to win the game. But in a real game, 1v1, the very hard AI, I, I always beat him against two opponents. 50-50 against three very hard AI opponents, I, I usually lose. Because against three of them, you'll be doing well against one or two, but then there's that one uh, guy that nobody's ever attacked, the, the AI, and he's then built this gigantic, massive army of, you know, 30 elephants and 10 battering rams. And while you're engaged with one opponent, the other opponent comes and just wipes out your whole farming operation in your civic center it's really tough the more opponents you have now when you play online multiplayer against real people you're never in a like a free-for-all kind of game it's always a team game so if you have four players it's 2v2 if you have eight players it's 4v4 you know so it's always a, a team game it's a little crazy when you have to deal with multiple opponents and there's no real allegiances Yeah, this chat is so bad. <laughs> yeah, well, the chat on YouTube uh, live streams is always bad. Regardless of what I'm streaming, regardless of who's streaming, it doesn't have to be me. <laughs> Just YouTube live streaming, the, the topics that get discussed, they can be kind of asinine sometimes. Let's see. Jack says, I can win any game with one soldier and ten healers. Yeah, an interesting way to play the game is... Uh, Nothing but women and priests. So no soldiers at all. <laughs> Try that. 
<laughs> that is interesting. Uh, building an army of nothing but women and priests and, you know, trying to destroy each other. Uh, you should try Zenotic. It's open source. Yeah, I'm aware of Zenotic. We've played Zenotic many times on the channel before as well. One of my favorite first-person shooters. Uh, here recently, I, I highlighted another first-person shooter that's really cool that was uh, Unvanquished. Unvanquished is a really cool first-person shooter. Free and open source and available on Linux. I think it's available on Windows, Mac, and Linux. Zenotic, the same, though. One thing about Linux and free and open source gaming, we have a ton of open source first-person shooters. Because the engines that these games are built on are open source. Most of them are built on some of the old Quake engines that were open sourced. Yeah, Zenotic is great. Yeah, agreed. Zenotic is definitely one of the best. So just briefly recapping, since this was going to be more of a tutorial kind of video about Zero AD for those of you trying it out, one of the things, don't be passive. That game that I won versus the game that I lost where I was kind of talking and going slow, what was the difference? One of them, I was slow. <laughs> one of them, I was constantly building, constantly training. You want to be aggressive. You want to be building as many people as fast as you can. And you notice early in that second game, I rushed the middle opponent, the red opponent, and I pretty much crippled him early in the game. And once I set him pretty far back early in the game, he was never, ever going to have as big an army as me because he, he lost so much early, right? And that's how you, you win the game. You have to cripple your opponents early. The earlier you can attack them, the better. Many, many new players they have in this mindset where I, I need to build this massive army until I get this massive army built, I can't do anything. No, you have 10, 20, 30 soldiers massed up at some point. You know, you can do a lot of damage with those if you put them on the right targets, which is typically the women and the fields or, you know, those buildings. You know, I, I, I stole a temple that was just off by itself. You know, I stole a barracks that was kind of off by itself. You know, that's how you that's how you win the game. You got to be aggressive. You got to be aggressive early in the game. If you sit back waiting, waiting until I have this amount of troops or until I get my elephants or till I get my battering rams or till I train my hero and this and that. Well, you're sitting back doing that. Well, your opponents are getting better. Right. So uh, you're leaving a lot to luck and to chance when you're passive. When you're aggressive, you leave nothing to luck because you're in control, right? You always want to be in control. And we should talk about, for those of you that want to learn more how to play the game, there are several, well, I won't say several, but there's a few YouTube channels that discuss Zero AD. Let me switch to my desktop here. If I do a search on YouTube for Zero AD, here is a channel that does a lot of um, Zero AD coverage. What this guy does is he gets multiplayer games that not he, he didn't play in them, but other people played and submit to him. And what he does is he commentates the gameplay and tells you, hey, this person's doing this and that and this person... Uh, you know, is doing a good strategy. This person is kind of using a dumb strategy, right? So this guy, Zero AD Newbie Rush, is really good. Another really good one is a guy named Valorant. I don't know if I spelled his name right. Valorant, there it is. Valorant, Zero AD, and AOE2, Age of Empires. And this guy, if you really want to know how to play Zero AD at an excellent level right like this guy is many people consider him one of the top two players in the entire game and he his uh channel is him actually playing multiplayer games against live people and uh he is just incredible 
Um, there is also one other channel, uh, Tom0AD. I haven't seen a video posted from this guy in a while because I'm subscribed to his channel. Yeah, he hasn't posted in about four months. But his channel has a lot of good uh, tutorial information about the game. Like he covers the various factions within the game and stuff like that. Some of this is a little out of date because the game sees new releases all the time and, you know, things change all the time uh, as far as civilizations and, you know, they add new stuff and then they make certain civilizations less powerful, more powerful. And, you know, every release is a little different. So that is a little bit about Zero AD for those of you that want to check it out. I think you'll be impressed. I think it's amazing that that game is a free and open source game right it's so good <laughs> like the gameplay is amazing the graphics are good the music is good like that's it's a shining example of what free and open source gaming can be i know a lot of people are doubters about you know we can we can have a lot of things that are free and open source software but we can never have free and open source games there's a lot of people that tell you that you know free and open source games never going to happen you got to have a bajillion bucks so it's always going to be a proprietary software made by a proprietary company you know it's got to pay all these you know developers a lot of money well yeah I, I don't mind developers being paid a lot of money but why does it have to be closed source i don't think gaming has to be closed source any more than your operating system, your text editor, your terminal emulator. Yeah, we've got all this other open source software, but we can't have open source games. No, no, no. Oh, wow. The chat's really blowing up now. Uh, we're talking about POSIX standards. Yeah, they, they don't mean anything. Standards don't mean anything as far as Linux and free and open source software, software in general. I get people all the time, uh, man, why doesn't Linux have standards? Why don't, why don't we have a standard that everybody agrees to? Okay, well, how are you going to get everybody to agree on everything? You, you can't, right? Even if you did, even if you happen to get every single person that's involved with free and open source software to agree to something, uh, eventually one of those people is going to change their mind or a new person is going to be introduced to that concept and say, hey, you know what? I can do better. I can do something different and it'll be better. That's always that's the case with free and open source software is everybody is always going to do their own thing because they have the freedom to do their own thing. You're never going to have standards. It's like people ask me about, yeah, POSIX standards and the uh, Linux standards base and the uh, file system hi hierarchy. Why do programs put files somewhere other than dot config in your home directory right all your config files should go in dot config because that's what the file hierarchy standard is end of story did we all agree to that <laughs> right <laughs> no <laughs> i mean yeah it's like it's because somebody said it's a standard it's a standard no it's not right i could go off on a rant maybe that'll be a video one day <laughs> my rant about standards and, and why people that complain about standards, I understand why they complain about it, but it's free and open source software. There's no standards and there'll never be standards. So let's see, what distro are you actually using? I'm using Arco Linux. The desktop environment is Xmonad. I've got a bunch of uh, window managers actually installed on this computer. The window manager I'm using today is Xmonad. It's typically what I'm in, but I've got DWM and Awesome and Qtile and i3 and Herbs Luft and Openbox, BSPWM. I think I've got StumpWM still installed, even though I don't particularly like that window manager. And probably three or four other that I escaped me off the top of my head. LeftWM, I think, is installed on this system. Most of them I haven't logged into in many, many weeks because there's so many different window managers. I mean, it's not like I can use them all, all the time. Typically, on my videos, what you guys typically see these days is usually Xmonad. If I'm not in Xmonad, usually I'm in Qtile, which Qtile looks and feels almost exactly like Xmonad, so it's easy for me to switch between those two particular window managers. Uh, why Arco? Because it's good. <laughs> Why not? Why not Arco, right? <laughs> why not any Linux distribution? I mean, they're all, I'm not going to say they're all the same. But uh, obviously, whether they're a static release or a rolling release, you know, it's different. 
uh, are they source based or binary based? I don't want a source based distribution. So things like Gentoo out, right? Uh, but yeah, Arco, perfect. Binary based, rolling release based on Arch, right? So why not? They do good work. I, I really like uh, what Arco Linux does. Let's see. Why not install Arch with a bash script? Well, why would I need a bash script to install Arch Linux? Installing Arch is like a 15 minute process doing it the Arch way, <laughs> right? I don't, I mean, I understand why some people might want one, but I, I've, I've been around Linux for long enough. I've installed Arch dozens of times. I, I wouldn't need a bash script to install Arch. So I'm not sure if you were asking me that, or maybe you were talking to somebody else in the chat. Yeah, you don't. You don't really need a script. Like the Arch installation is pretty dang easy. I've installed Arch many, many times on camera on this channel. Um, come on, DT. We all know Arch Linux based distributions are the best. Well, it depends on what you're doing. I, there is a case to be made for static release, stable distributions. Not for what I do, right? For the, everything I do, I, I'm always testing out new software and things. Uh, I need, me personally, I need to be on a rolling release, or, or I, at least I prefer to be. But that's for me. You know, er, everybody's situation is different. If I didn't do this YouTube channel, I'd be, be honest, I'd probably just run Debian Stable. <laughs> <laughs> like the furthest thing from Arch possible, right? I'd probably just run Debian stable because I, I would just have my software that's installed that I use and that's it, right? But because these days, I, you know, because of the channel, I play with so much software. If I didn't play with software, right? If I just installed stuff that I actually use and that was it, yeah, Debian stable, be done with it. Yeah, Emacs OS win. Well, I mean, that's kind of what I've turned my DTOS in. I mean, it's a... X monad, but I mean, it's a lot of Emacs. I mean, if, if I didn't want to, I mean, I could launch PC man FM, my file manager here, the graphical file manager, but why does that have to be my file manager? I have a key binding to just launch dear ed in Emacs, right? <laughs> Emacs can be my file manager. I have that capability. I've got, some, you know, I, 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 Development on DTOS has kind of slowed down as, as far as my work on it because it's one of those things I, I can't just drop everything and for weeks at a time devote things to like the DTOS script because, you know, I, I don't make any money on DTOS, right? It's just a side project. I have to take time out to do this job here, right? Making videos. Uh, a lot of people are like, hey, man, why don't you learn this? Why don't you do that? And, you know, it would be something that would take, you know, six months for me to learn. You know, I get, you know, comments like that all the time. And it's like, oh, do you not like my videos? You want me to go away for six months? Because <laughs> that's what it would take before I could actually make a video on some of the topics that some of these people ask me about sometimes. Uh, yeah, you just installed Lubuntu on your mother-in-law's old laptop. I've installed Lubuntu on many friends and family machines. As far as underpowered machines, that's usually my go-to is Lubuntu. And uh, yeah, everybody loves it. Never had a problem with Lubuntu. All right, we've been streaming for about an hour and 50 minutes. I'm going to try to keep it under two hours because usually if I keep it under two hours, the sync over to Odyssey goes better. If I go over two hours, the sync sometimes doesn't happen. So I'm going to go for, we'll say another two or three minutes. We'll get your last questions and comments and we're going to shut the stream down. So if you guys got anything else to say in the YouTube chat, say it now so it will forever be recorded. Let's see. I really have no reason to run Linux at this point, and Windows is disgusting. Well, if, you, if Windows is disgusting, but you don't really want to run Linux, I mean, I guess there's Mac OS, right? <laughs> if, you, if you got some money, you could drop some cash on a MacBook. Uh, how did DistroTube get into Arch Linux? Uh, the same way I got into every other Linux distribution. I just installed it to try it out. I mean, I've distro hopped a lot. There's no getting into something. You just try stuff out, right? At least that's what most people in Linux do. They usually try out dozens of different distributions at some point. If you're in Linux for any length of time, you're going to play with a lot of different distributions because you're always going to think there's something better over there. <laughs> 
<laughs> so that's the case. You know, I'm on Debian now, but you know what? I hear good things about Fedora, so let me hop to it for a couple of months. And then, like, the Arch guys always talk about, by the way, well, let me try out Arch. And, the, and them Gen 2 guys keep telling me that source-based distributions are the way to go. And the, hey, Nix OS, that's the new hotness. Let me go try that. And Void, Void's really cool too, right? And then eventually we're going to get the new release of Slackware. And when that comes out, you know, be the first big release of Slackware in like five years, I'm going to hop to it, right? Well, well, no, I'm not, but you guys might. <laughs> But that's how it that's how it goes. You're constantly hopping, especially until you get to a point where I, I've gotten to the point where now I don't see much difference between various Linux distributions. I mean, there's again, there's there's differences, but underneath underneath the hood, it's always the same Linux kernel. That's pretty much any Linux distribution running the Linux kernel is going to always have the same hardware support. All your hardware is going to work, no matter what distribution you run. They're all going to have the same bash shell up under the hood so when you drop to a command line you know all the shell commands that you learned on one distribution they work on a, the other distributions it's all the same at some point you know and once you again get under the hood where you quit looking at things through well what desktop environment did they ship with what icon set did they ship with what gtk theme did they ship with none of that stuff really matters right Let's see. ADT, do you have some opinion about all open source software these days, but not under GPL? I mean, it means without copy left, GPL license is not used too much as before. Uh, anything that is licensed under a free and open source license is free and open source software. It doesn't have to be GPL. GPL is just one free license, but anything that's licensed under BSD, MIT, Apache, uh, the Mozilla Public License, MPL, um, those are the five big free and open source licenses that most free software license under one of those five. They're all considered free licenses, you know, by the Free Software Foundation. They're all considered open source licenses uh, by the Open Source Initiative. So, um, as far as is one better than the other, I guess it it would depend on, again, the person th that's developing that software, maybe the purpose of that software. I, nothing's ever, nothing's ever one size fits all. You said the GPL though is not being used as much as before. Yeah, the GPL is not as popular these days as before. I think a lot of that has to do with there's more free and open source software being developed now. It's not that not as many people are using the GPL. It's just a lot of the new people that are coming to free and open source software, typically corporations like Google and Microsoft and Apple and Facebook, and these companies that are never going to use the GPL. And they're just ideologically, you know, a corporation does not like licensing under the GPL because the copy left uh, nature of it. They're, they're scared <laughs> to have anything to do with the GPL. So that's the big reason why especially these days, the Apache license is very popular and the MIT license is very popular. That's typically what the big corporations license their free software under. GPL is still used by many people, you know, the small people in the community, you know, what we think of the free and open source community, right? But if you're developing free and open source software for an actual corporation, they're going to make you pr pretty much always license it under Again, you know, usually these days, the Apache or the MIT license. Uh, have you ever thought of licensing your videos under Creative Commons? My, my videos are already licensed under Creative Commons. Check any, uh, any show description. <laughs> Like the, the show description on every video, like the last line, YouTube actually says, hey, this is licensed under a Creative Commons license. And that's one of the things I did uh, several years back was YouTube has an option. You can actually, as a creator, choose to license your stuff as Creative Commons. Which is nice that YouTube allows that. So, because it would kind of suck if YouTube said, well, you know, everything you post on YouTube is ours. 
which they would have every right. I mean, I'm posting stuff on their servers. They're spending a lot of money to host my video. And if they said they had the rights to my video, me personally, I would understand that, but I'm glad they at least allow me the option to license it under a Creative Commons license. So it's freely available for everybody to use. Can Steam Deck bring more games on Linux in the future? It's definitely going to. It's not, can they? It's going to happen. All right, guys. Well, we're coming up on the top of the hour. Let me go ahead and get out of here. Of course, before I go, I want to thank the patrons. So let me thank these guys here on screen. So I want to thank Devin, Gabe, James, Matt, Michael, Mitchell, Paul, Scott, Wes, Akami, Allen, Lenny, Snidish, Chuck, Commander, Angry, Kurt, Dayoka, David, Dylan, Gregory, Heiko, Oscar, Lee, Maxim, Mike, Nitrous, Arion, Alexander, Peace, Arch, and Fedora, Polytech, Ray, 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 Stephen, and Willie. Those guys. <laughs> They're my highest tiered patrons over on Patreon. I also want to thank each and every one of these guys. There's no way I'm rattling off that list of names, but these guys, I appreciate them too. These are all my supporters over on Patreon because, I mean, you guys know. It's me and you, right? If you enjoy my work, hey, check out DistroTube over on Patreon. All right, guys. Hey, man, can you sing I'm a Barbie Girl? No. Peace. <laughs> what kind of question is that?